Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you know, OpenAI has announced something we have been waiting for since May probably, their new real-time API, which brings speech-to-speech -speech interactions to developers. Before, building a voice assistant required developers to first transcribe the audio using a tool like Whisper, then send the text to large language model for processing, and then convert it back to speech. This process often lost key elements like emotions, accents, emphasis, while also introducing quite noticeable delays due to multiple steps involved. But now with real-time API, the process is streamlined with audio being processed directly, significantly reducing latency and overall enabling more natural, more human-like conversations. So in this video, we are going to build an AI voice agent using the real-time API. This agent will answer calls on behalf of our agency and its job will be to engage with leads, get their name, availability for a call and the service they need, and then it will send those details to Google Spreadsheets so that we could follow up and schedule a discovery call. Hi, I'm looking for an AI solution. Is it Bosar Agency? Hello, yes, this is Bosar Agency, your AI automation partner. May I have your name, please? Yes, sir, my name is Ben. Thank you, Ben. Could you let me know what type of AI solution you're interested in developing? Um, I'm looking for an AI chatbot and I want to deploy it to my website. It is a um, construction business. Great. An AI chatbot for a construction-based website sounds like a valuable tool. When would be a good time for us to have a detailed discussion about your project? Um, you schedule a call at your convenience. Would you prefer a morning or afternoon call? We want to make sure it fits well into your schedule. Um, so I, I might be available tomorrow at um, 3 p.m. Perfect, Ben. Let's schedule a call for tomorrow at 3 p.m. I'm looking forward to discussing your AI chatbot project in more detail. If anything changes on your end. Cool, thank you. Okay, so this is a quick demo. The prompt is not op optimized, but I just wanted to show you the live uncut latency. It is almost instant, and that's what you can achieve with this real-time API. So this is how the solution works. First, we have our caller, right, who dials a number we got from Twilio. The first step is the voice input from the caller to Twilio. Once Twilio receives the call, it replies to the caller with the default greeting we set, something like, hi, you've reached um, both our agency, how can we help you today? And at the same time, it initiates a connection with our code, which is hosted on Replit. Then our code on Replit initiates another connection with OpenAI. So we end up with two WebSocket connections, one between Twilio and Replit, and another one between Replit and OpenAI. Now, we're gonna be using WebSockets a lot in this process, so a WebSocket is a way for your app or browser to communicate with a server in real time using one continuous connection. Unlike the usual HTTP methods, like the one we'll be using here for our communication with make.com, you know, where your app has to keep asking for updates, a WebSocket keeps the connection open. It's like an open portal so the data can move back and forth instantly. And when using OpenAI's real-time API, WebSockets are perfect because they let you get responses from the API as soon as the large language model creates them. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of important to understand this. Then there is one more step after the call is complete. Our Replit will ask OpenAI to extract the key data points from the call, from the transcript, our variables, right? And then it will send them to make.com via API and make.com will create a new row in Google Sheets uh, with our leads information. Now let's dive into the code itself. You can find all the documentation, of course, on the OpenAI developer platform. Uh, you will also find this quick start guide here. And uh, this documentation also provides a ready to use JavaScript code, okay? So you can just copy it 
um, to your project and it will work. As mentioned, for this project, we will develop our code on Replit. We will use Twilio for a phone number and for redirecting the incoming calls from this number to our API. We will also have make.com automation that will get the variables from the call transcripts and add a new row to a Google Sheet with the user's name, availability for a call, and some notes. Now, let's review the code. Um, by the way, this code will be available as a template on Replit um, completely for free in my resource hub on school. So you can just copy it and tweak as needed instead of writing the whole thing yourself. And if you're feeling a bit lost, if the code seems confusing to you, no worries. The, the goal of this video is to give you an overview of how it works. But if you want to dive deeper and actually learn how to build it yourself, you can join our AI Fellowship Academy and there you'll get a coding crash course specifically designed for building this kind of AI solution. So by the end, you'll be able to build something like this on your own. Both links to my resource hub on school and to the AI fellowship program will be attached in the video description. We have only two files in this project. There is index.js, which contains the main logic of our application, and openai.service.js, which has all the OpenAI related functions. In this project, we will use the Fastify Node.js framework. So first we need to import the Fastify package. Um, we will also use WebSockets, of course, so we need to import that as well. Then in our main file, we will use some functions and variables that are located in OpenAI Service.js. So we will review that file a bit later. Then we define some constants. We have a port, so our server will run on the port specified on line number um, 13. Next, we define constants for the OpenAI API key and webhook, which are loaded from the process. Um, so to make it all work, uh, you should go to the secrets and add these variables to secrets so they are available in the process. The first one is your OpenAI API key, and the second one in my case is the webhook URL from make.com. Next, we configure the Node.js framework or Fastify framework. Um, we add a constant to handle sessions. Um, so every time we receive a call to our phone number, Twilio redirects it to our API endpoint and we redirect it to the WebSocket stream. And every time that WebSocket receives a connection, we add a new session to our sessions variable. We also need to create an OpenAI WebSocket connection, which we do in OpenAI Service.js. So to create it, um, we use this URL and headers that you can find in the official documentation from OpenAI. You can just copy that code and paste it to your project, okay? After the WebSocket connection to OpenAI is opened, we update the session configuration because it is created with default values and we need to pass custom instructions to it. Okay, so we need to send a session update request. This function is also defined in OpenAI Service.js. So we create the session update event when we specify the session object and set parameters like voice and the system message we want to use. Okay, so we use the system message defined in the system message constant. We send this configuration to the OpenAI WebSocket and after we've done that, we configure the code to listen for messages from the OpenAI WebSocket. We are listening to all events, but we are only interested in some of them. So we log only the events we specify in this list, okay? We are interested in these nine events, but you can, you can find the full list of events in the documentation where you can also read about each of them. All right, here we log the OpenAI WebSocket events and then we have several functions. When we receive a response from the user, we add the transcript to a session. We also log what the user said to the console so we can check it. We also listen for an event um, when we get a response from the agent. Um, we add this message to the transcript and log it to the console as well. Then we are logging the message when we update the session. So this function will fire if the update is successful. And we also have functions that send the new audio to the Twilio WebSocket connection. 
Then we have this cache block um, to log the error messages in the console as well. So we can debug if something goes wrong. There is a callback block for the Twilio WebSocket connection. So every time we receive some voice data through our Twilio phone number, we catch it here and send the data to the OpenAI WebSocket. Okay, this is just to log that the incoming stream has started. And we also have a block to handle the close event. So when the phone call ends, we log that the client disconnected. Um, we output the full transcript of the session. As you remember, we update the session transcript after every response. We append the user's message and then the agent's response to the transcript. So we output the full transcript to the console and call the function to process the transcript and send it to our webhook to make this come, and then we delete the session. All right, this process transcript and send function is defined in OpenAI service JS. Um, we pass the transcript, the webhook URL, and the optional session ID. First, we process this transcript using ChatGPT's completions API. We pass the whole transcript here. We make a call to the completions API. We set system instructions in the messages array and send the transcript in the user's message. Then this function returns as JSON because we set the response format to JSON with um, fields like customer name, customer availability, and special notes. Once we have this information, we log it to the console so we can check it. We then use this content and send it to our webhook, the one that we created on Mac.com, of course. On Mac.com, we have only two modules, a custom webhook that receives the data and this Google Sheets module that adds a new row to our spreadsheet using the received data. Of course, you need to connect your Google account, select the relevant spreadsheet and set variables for each column. First, we need to determine um, the data structure. So we need to make at least one call for the webhook to receive some data like test data and understand that it will be receiving these particular variables, customer name, customer availability and special notes in all incoming requests. Um, so yeah, we send this data to the webhook. Then we have a couple of blocks um, that just output errors to the console. Um, and that's, that's it. Now let's connect it to Twilio and we'll test it out together. Let's make sure our scenario in Mac.com is running. Then click run in Replit. And you need to get this dev URL, just copy it and go to Twilio. In Twilio, once you have an active number, it is pretty straightforward how to obtain it. Go to the configure tab and here in the um, a call comes in section, we need to paste our dev URL from Replit as a webhook, right? One more thing to do here is to add the incoming call route to the URL and then press save. Okay, I'm gonna call this number and let's see how it works. Hi, you have called to Bosar Agency. How can we help you today? Hi, I am looking to introduce um, an AI chatbot to my construction business. Great, an AI chatbot can really streamline operations in your construction business. May I have your name, please, so I can make a note of who I'm speaking with? Yes, my name is Ben. Thank you, Ben. When would you be available for a call to discuss the details of the AI chatbot you'd like to develop? We can arrange it. Um, I, I will be available tomorrow at 2 p.m. Perfect, Ben. I've scheduled a call for you tomorrow at 2 p.m. to go over the specifics of the AI chatbot for your construction business. We look forward to speaking with you then. Is there anything else I can help you with today? No, that's okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so I ended the call now. And if you look at my console, I have all the logs here so I can check it. Uh, I can see how many total tokens were spent, input tokens, output tokens. So all of that is here. By the way, you might have noticed that the voice was a bit different in the beginning, like the, the first phrase 
from Twilio, right? That's because the first phrase is not from OpenAI, it is from Twilio. And then uh, the LLM, the OpenAI model took over and I, I started communicating with it. That's not ideal. So uh, for real life use case, we would optimize it. We would avoid this. But again, the goal of this video is to just show you the, the logic of how it works. Um, so I think for this demo, it is more than enough. At the end of the call, as you can see here, it extracted the data points, the variables that we stipulated, and then it passed them to make.com. And by the way, if you pay attention to the date here, um, customer availability, it understands the date, which is now like today. And when I say tomorrow, it automatically realizes which date is tomorrow. So if you go to my spreadsheet here, it is automatically pre-populated name Ben availability according to my format. Uh, so tomorrow is the 18th of October and 2 p.m. And then the customer notes, customer is looking to introduce an AI chatbot to his construction business. Very clear. And if you pay attention to this line number 71, here I stipulated today's date is, and I clarified which day is today to make sure the format is aligned. Okay, guys, we all know that this is just the beginning. The tools are evolving incredibly fast, but even now the tech is already there to build workable voice solutions, okay? You've probably heard of YC or Y Combinator, the world's top startup accelerator and um, Sam Altman by the way was its president at some point in the past. So YC gets over 10,000 startup applications every batch and they have a great bird's eye view of the startup ecosystem um, and even they talk a lot about voice as a platform. Let me just share with you a short clip from one of their most recent videos. It seems like the tech is there where yeah you can do voice. Yeah yes and you can program voice yes and have it be pretty good and the latency is good enough yes that you can make phone calls and have yes and it's only going to get better that's wild and if we think of voice as a platform that is a big platform yes. same goes with email the same goes with sms and so yes. again to be very tactical what we're saying is what we're already seeing at yc is that these tools are good enough yes that you can build scary good stuff human simulating <laughs> stuff you see it's a no-brainer i'm telling you right now as i'm filming this video there are hundreds of startups out there building SaaS products um that will use these real-time capabilities especially speech-to-speech -speech tech even i feel a bit of fomo for not developing a SaaS product right now but the reality is most of those startups will fail why because they are using this amazing tech to solve a problem that doesn't exist. They don't know how to sell it or who to sell it to. Our strategy is different and I suggest that you consider doing the same. Step number one, obviously learn how to build this kind of solution and how to leverage this technology. Step number two, find the most pressing problem to solve. Um, our approach to discovering this is by selling various AI and automation solutions to different businesses. That's the goal of running our AI agency, becoming great at solving a specific problem. And step number three, once you've identified a recurring problem and sold a solution to it multiple times as an AI agency, for example, that's your validation of the problem solution hypothesis. And after that, you can build a SaaS product that could become a really scalable startup. But again, step number one is to learn, to actually learn how to build it. So I invite you to our AI Fellowship Academy, which we are launching very soon in a few weeks. In this program first, we'll provide you with a coding crash course. So you'll be comfortable building solutions like the one I showed you today in this video. Second, we'll give you an inside look at how 
our agency operates, including sales. I'll share live recordings of sales calls, address the most common objections, and much, much more. Plus, you'll become part of our exclusive community with direct access to me, my team, and other AA Fellowship participants. You'll find the link in the video description and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Also, let me know in the comments which kind of tutorial you'd like me to prepare next and I'll do my best to make it happen. Thanks for watching this one and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.